My utmost for his highest. It's always fun. I used to make the challenge to almost every person I met that really wanted to. They would come to me and they'd say, well, you know, I really want to get close to God and I'd, I'd like to be a lot more intimate than I am. And I'd really like to learn fast or develop quickly <coughs> some of what used to be called the graces. You know, and <laughs> maybe it was a little humorous, but I used to give them the utmost for their highest and tell them, read it. If you can read it through in one year, that'll change you. Now, if you do make it that far, try doing it for one year. Say, if you do that, come back and see me. <laughs> I'll be totally impressed. But the reality is, is that even the most devout that I've ever met doesn't usually read it all the way through in a year. And anyone that I've ever met has never put into practice daily or every day or partially or whatever the things that are written are contained herein because <coughs> God knew what he was doing when he inspired Chambers to write it and call it my utmost because it's going to take the uttermost to get you to his utmost especially to be the highest the next best thing to do seek and you shall find seek if you have not found you ask and receive not because you ask amiss. If you ask for things from life instead of from God, you ask amiss. Meaning, if you ask from a desire for self-realization, the more you realize yourself, the less you will seek God. Seek and you shall find. Get to work. Narrow your interest to this one. Have you ever sought God with your whole heart or have you only given a languid cry to him after a twinge of some moral neuralgia, meaning <laughs> you felt bad, you felt sorry, so you said, oh Lord, I'm seeking you. That's what moral neuralgia can mean in a modern application to it. <clears throat> Seek, concentrate, and you will find is what it means. Ho, oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. Are you thirsty or smugly indifferent? So satisfied with your experience that you want nothing more of God? Experience is a gateway, not an end. Beware of building your faith on experience. The metallic note will come in it at once, the sensuous note. You can never give another person that which you have found, but you can make him homesick for what you have. Lots of people want to tell others what to do, but if you just show others what you are, then they will desire to, if it's truly of God, they will desire what you have and want to get it too. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Draw nigh to God. Knock, the door is closed, and you suffer from palpitation as you knock. Cleanse your hands. Knock a bit louder. You begin to find you are dirty. Purify your heart. This is more personal still. You are desperately in earnest now. You will do anything. Be afflicted. Have you ever been afflicted before God at the state of your inner life? There is no strand of self-pity left, but a heartbreaking affliction of amazement to find you are the kind of person that you are. Humble yourself. It is a humbling business to knock at God's door. You have to knock with the crucified thief. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. In respect to Chambers, most of Christianity today can't handle what Chambers says, and they write it off as being some type of religious expression or theology that they don't want to hear because it does bring you back into a proper perspective of who God is what God is and how God deals with holiness and personal accountability because people would rather claim it and just assume and presume that it's all done so they can just run out and play like babies and never grow up like children and never become adults or mature as Chambers says to become the utmost 
when you choose to do that, then you will recognize that there is more to what you don't have than what you do have. That you can press on to something greater than what you ever dreamed you are in the little sandbox that you play in. Because that's what we all do. We play and we enjoy and we laugh and we sing and we dance. And we have this perspective of just everything's hunky-dory as long as it's going right. But the first time that there's somebody else in the sandbox that kicks sand in our face or displaces us from the little corner that we were playing in, then the reality of our relationship comes to the surface. Who are we really? What are we really? That's what Utmost is about. Not just revealing to ourselves what we are like, but pointing us in the direction of what we can become because Jesus said we could and that's what we should be desiring the utmost when we do hmm, watch out the world has not seen what one man whose heart is perfect before the Lord can do or one woman or one child and you just might be that person Maybe you'll be the one that'll read through and complete and do all that is contained herein. If you do, let me know. I haven't yet.